Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Benoit Terrier. I'm a project leader at the Rhone Mediterranean and Corsica Water Agency. I'm an expert in river restoration. Um, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to this conference. And I'm going to tell you about protecting and restoring rivers in France with a focus on the Rhone Mediterranean basin. Now, in 1964, uh, there was a French water law which created seven river basins and seven river basin committees. Those river basin committees can be seen as parliament of water. They are composed of 40% of local authorities 40% of water users and 20% of representative of the state. And this water law created six water agencies as can be seen on the map in the bottom right. Now the main missions of the water agencies are to implement the water policy. So it's according to national guidance, but designed at basin level with the parliament of water. And it does that by collecting environmental taxes, by applying the water pays for water or the polluter pays principles. And then it gives subsidies to finance projects to restore pollution, river, to reduce pollution, to restore rivers and so forth. And it's also responsible for preparing the river basin management plan according to the EU directives. And it's got a few more missions as well. Now, when you look at the ecological status on the Rhone Mediterranean basin for the river water bodies, you would see that about a third of rivers have an altered hydrological regime due to water abstraction or um, hydroelectricity, uh, hydropower plants. About 45% of the water bodies have their biological and sediment transport continuity disrupted by weirs or dams. And about 50% of water bodies are at risk of not reaching good ecological status due to morphological pressures such as channelization, bank protection, and so forth. Those water bodies um, at risk are in red and orange on the map on the, on the left. And the map on the right shows the ecological status of the water bodies um, for the Rhone Mediterranean basin. And you can see only half of the water bodies are in good ecological status and you have a strong correspondence between the morphological pressures and the ecological status. Another important piece of information to explain the French context is the fact that in France, one in four inhabitants is exposed to flood risk. Um, and the Rhone Mediterranean basin is the river basin the most exposed to flood risk in France, uh, as can be seen on the map on the right, which was produced uh, for the National Preliminary Flood Risk Assessment in 2012. Now, there was really the need for a new law on managing aquatic environment and flood risk. Why? It may seem strange, but in France, you could have ecological river restoration projects and flood risk projects, which could sometimes be managed by different organizations and with contradictory objectives. There was really a big cultural gap between people working on river restoration projects and the people working on flood risk. So uh, in 2014, there was a new law on the modernization of public action, which created a mandatory competence for the management of aquatic environment and flood risk. And it gave it to municipalities and groups of municipalities. And by 2018, the responsibility for the maintenance and restoration of water courses and flood protection structures belongs exclusively to municipalities and cooperation structures with taxation powers. Now, on the Rhone and Mediterranean River Basin, we made, um, well, we worked to identify catchments with combined objectives of river restoration, those are the catchments in orange on, on the map, and flood alleviation, which are the areas uh, which are hatched on, on the map. Um, this is basically defining the priorities for those combined objectives. And the flood risk management plans and the river basin management plans are being made coherent by having similar prescriptions and having people um, of both teams working on both documents working together. Now, in order to promote the change in river management required by the new law, uh, communication tools proved essential to explain and give sense. So we produced a, a video clip and you might recognize 
an extract of a video clip that uh, was translated into Slovenian, thanks to Polona Pengal and Revival. Um, this video clip proved to be highly successful in, in the river basin, but in France and even in, internationally. Um, we promoted nature-based solution and we carry on promoting those nature-based solution at a catchment scale, you know, giving more space to rivers, slowing down the flow by restoring rivers and so forth. Those are really solutions that can help to restore the ecology and tackle flood risk. Now, another tool that we have on the Rhone Mediterranean Basin is making space for a river. Um, sp space for a river is the space that a river needs for its good ecological functioning, taking into account um, the morphology, the hydraulics, and so forth. And the river basin management plan requires to take this space into account in urban planning when it has been defined. And it, it is very important to make this link with urban planning so that you know this is really useful uh, when new developments are proposed and, and, and this space can be taken into account. It is an excellent tool to tackle both flood risk and river restoration. And, and the map you can see on the, uh, on, on the left shows the catchment where space for river has been defined for at least one river. Now, another piece of information uh, about environmental flow. By law, since 2014 in France, the minimum flow rate downstream of a barrier should be at least 10% of module, or it should be the biological minimum flow if 10% is not enough. This is for all rivers. And I'm going to give you an example of an older project where the minimum flow was um, raised from 10 cubic meter per second to 100 cubic meter per second uh, in the south of Lyon, the Rhone River. And you can see on this graph that it made a big difference in the proportion of fish, rehophilic species, you know, the, the, the fish species um, that like fast flowing water. And there was a big increase and it, now it corresponds to what we would expect um, for such a large river as, as, as a Alpine river as the Rhone. Um, now, there was also a legal requirement to publish two lists of river reaches uh, list number one um, would be river riches in very good ecological conditions, uh, which have to be preserved. They are the riches in green on the map uh, on the right. And list number two are river riches for which restoring ecological continuity is required. Um, so or originally the deadline was 2018, but it got delayed and it's now by 2023. And those river riches where uh, restoring ecological continuity is required are in blue on the map. And um, well, this is basically defining the priorities you know, for, for this policy of restoring ecological continuity. Um, this map with the dots shows you where ecological continuity has been restored and it's been restored on over 3000 weirs or dams, mostly after 2010. So, you know, is it, a lot or not, you know, the, the total number of weirs and dams on the river basins is 24, nearly 25,000 weirs. So there are many, many structures, but the priorities have been defined and you can see that quite significant progress has been accomplished, even though there is still a lot more to be done. Okay, now um, what is also really important is to develop bottom-up approaches. Ecological river restoration is an integral part of town and country planning. It's got a strong political dimension. This is what can be illustrated you know, by this drawing. Um, and decision makers you know, need to see the multiple benefits of having a, a functional uh, river from an ecological point of view, because it will have benefits in, in terms of water quality, quality of life, having a na more natural environment, and also in terms of um, some economic uh, water uses, you know, from touristic point of view and so forth. Now, what we have also is that many projects um, now would have a planned listening phase where one listens to stakeholders and people, um, typically through, through interviews. Um, and this is used to design more integrated projects. Um, Another thing which is really important is at the start of a project to explain to stakeholders and decision makers how a river works, you know, explaining basic principles of fluvial dynamics. 
and what the multiple benefits of a functional river are um, and why preservation and restoration are essential. What we see as useful is trying to explain the history of, of the river and its floodplain. As can be seen, for example, on the aerial photograph um, on, 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 at the bottom, you can see, for example, that a uh, floodplain might become developed, um, built, and then you have a large flood that arrives and, and it would bring you know, much um, destruction. So preserving space for river is not just for the ecology, it's also for many rivers um, for uh, important for uh, in terms of flood risk. Right, this graph shows you um, the cu cumulated um, morphological river restoration that took place since 2013. So we have restored about 500 kilometers of rivers within six years for, and we spent about 450 million euros on river restoration. So between 2013 and 2018, it was a similar budget, budget applied for the following six years, slightly less. Now I'm going to give you a couple of examples. So the river Isron, um, has, uh, is located in the south of Lyon. It's, uh, it's an urban river. It's, in a, um, uh, it's been very channelized. Um, and a concrete channel was removed. Um, over one kilometer of concrete was removed. Concrete channel was removed. And a gravel bed was recreated. Large woody debris were added. More space to the river was also given by removing a car park. Eight weirs were removed uh, and restoration took also place on 27 weirs in the catchment uh, that took place within 15 years. And those striking photos that you can see are the um, photos of the rivers before and after restoration. And the drawing at the, at the center is the, the, work, the work as it was projected and as it was shown to the decision makers. And it helps to convince decision makers and stakeholders, you know, to go ahead with the, the project. And, and it's a, considered as a very successful project. Another example is that of the um, river Airbus in the drone, drone catchment. It was a river contract signed. A river contract is a tool we use in France um, to facilitate the implementation of, um, you know, actions on rivers, uh, such as a river restoration. The project had, had, a, had a strong making space for river components strategy to alleviate um, you know, flooding up to the 100 year flood event. Uh, two kilometers of um, uh, river were restored and 20 weirs have been either removed or equipped with a fish pass. And what's interesting is that the ecological continuity has been restored over the whole 35 kilometer of river, which is a great success for this river. In terms of lessons learned and challenges, you know, the legal framework, yes, help. It's not complete, it's not perfect, and but it is of a great help to preserve river and implement river restoration. But it cannot be enough, at least for France, you know, really projects should be designed with the engagement of stakeholders. They should not be designed solely on technical grounds, but also take into account socioeconomic aspects so that they are really fully integrated and bring those multiple benefits. And um, one still needs to bring a cultural change in practices. Climate change brings new challenges and decision makers now see that, you know, we must change our practices. Uh, so it does contribute to, to bring this change. And sharing lessons learned and experience helps to drive, infuse, motivate to do more for both people and the environment. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention.